try to take you on a journey for the next 15 minutes, one that I've been on for actually over 35 years. So I started when I was three. Um, yeah, no, I have uh, been in this world of what I call the eco-renaissance. I actually love being in Austin right now because back in uh, 2005, I actually launched the first textile initiative in Whole Foods Market, which really was about connecting the dots from food to beauty to fashion and lifestyle and all across the board. All of these dots are connected. I actually started my career in 1990, I co-founded a school known as the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Today, there's almost 200,000 certified health coaches. And people back then thought I was kind of crazy, right? Like, you know, and it was very much an alternative movement. And today, as we just heard from preventive uh, neurology, that this is about now, you know, getting ahead of this. It's not even about staying ahead anymore. It's about not being left behind and understanding how to embrace this kind of lifestyle. So I wrote a book um, that was really inspired by the fact that in the original Renaissance, it was a time of dark ages. And if all of you are not asleep right now, you know very well that we're living in sort of a modern day Star, Star Wars, right? We've got this dark and the light forces that are at odds. Well, climate crisis, it's not even climate change anymore, it's a climate crisis. And you know we all have to be part of this equation. One of my favorite quotes, which was on the last slide is, you know, from Albert Einstein, right? We can't solve today's problems with the same consciousness that created them, right? So we have to elevate our consciousness and we have to climb that ladder and change our perspective. You know, it breaks my heart today when you hear kids say they don't want to have children, right? Because they don't want to bring kids into this world. And so when we talk about detoxifying our lifestyle, it's about starting with design. And that, you know, in my book, Eco Renaissance, the premise is through the lens of design, we can change the world. If you appeal to people at that visceral level, right, aesthetically, you know, with what they see, what they feel, they touch, they, you know, smell, and then, oh, by the way, take them down this sort of proverbial rabbit hole of why and how and when and where, and, you know, then it's about serving ourselves. Serving others is serving ourselves. And we're all in this together, right? So we have to co-create and redesign a new reality that's based on no compromise, right? That's based on not degeneration and pollution and degradation, but about nurturing and protecting. It's about the five C's, which is what I talk about in my book, what are really the fundamental principles of this entire movement. Creativity, because we're all creators. Consciousness, which I mentioned, it is really about tapping into that higher level of, that higher sixth sense, right? Connection, community, and collaboration. Because one plus one equals 11, everyone who knows me knows that's my mantra, that we're stronger together than we are apart. And we have to come together to co-create, to change the way the systems that are destroying us today um, are there. So we can unlock the potential that we have and be really focused on, you know, here it's really about mind, body, spirit, right? Positivity, gratitude, you know, service, and understanding that being part of a, a more conscious, toxic-free lifestyle is not about sacrifice or deprivation. It's about value add, right? Which is why in 1995, I coined the term eco-fashion and filed a trademark on that term, and people looked at me like, yeah, th that will never work, Marcy. People who are into fashion are not into consciousness and the environment and social justice. And I'm like, well, I want both, right? So I've spent the last 25 plus years styling the world of change and changing the world of style and building this kind of new paradigm with this mantra and understanding that we're all just made of energy, right? And everything we put in, on, and around our bodies is an extension of who we are. So when we start with, you know, being a creator and we talk about art being life, Right? It's about looking at how can we build a relationship with nature, that we have a symbiotic relationship with nature. We breathe out carbon, and nature's meant to breathe it in and breathe out oxygen, which we breathe in. So check out John Hardy and Elora Hardy's TED Talks on this insane, beautiful community they built all out of bamboo that is probably the most stunning architecture I've actually ever seen. And, you know, why we're all here, I mean, art, music, film, I mean, this feeds our soul, right? So it's about, you know, looking through a different lens when we, you know, tap into the arts. And as my daughter, who created a, a nonprofit called Entertainment for Change, says, we can all be impact artists. And, you know, you see a film like Don't Look Up, 
as a reminder that we're all in this together. And we all, how many of you eat organic food or live a more conscious lifestyle when it comes to food? So I say that's kind of the gateway to this movement, right? Whether it's regenerative, it's organic, you're you know, keto or gluten free. It's about having that mindfulness and having that consciousness, that understanding that the first thing that changes when we change our diet and our lifestyles is our blood. That is our life support system. It feeds us. So why do we want to put poison in our blood, right? Why do we want to, you know, feed ourselves? It's like, let food be thy medicine, right? That's the Hippocratic Oath that the entire medical system is built on, although so many doctors don't learn about food as a tool for health. They're starting to, but when I, you know, started IIN, it was still a somewhat foreign concept. Everybody in the world who knew about organic, we all knew each other. That's how small the movement was. So it's really fun. You know, 83% of Americans today are buying organic food, at least occasionally. And Costco is the largest uh, distributor of organic in America, not Whole Foods. So, you know, I'm an ambassador for an organization called the Rodell Institute. And I'll just sum up by saying, you know, healthy soil makes healthy plants, which makes healthy people. And if you haven't seen the film, Kiss the Ground or read the book, I recommend you do so. It really helps you understand the power of soil and being GMO free and healthy soil. It's a living, breathing ecosystem. And I liken soil to the skin of the earth, right? Because the skin is the largest organ in our bodies. It's our primary organ for absorption. So it's not just what we put in our bodies. It's not just you are what you eat. You're also what you put on your bodies, which is why the beauty industry right now has gone from, you know, my mentor of 25 years as the founder of Aveda. He passed away a few years ago. He wrote the forward to my book, but he was such a powerful, iconic, inspiring human and got, you know, took such a leap of faith in saying, you know, we can have beautiful scent and functionality and also, you know, be non-toxic. And so when you look at, you know, people like Jay Shetty, who's out there talking about on purpose and the eight rules of love or the Global Wellness Institute or, you know, brands like Higher Dose or in this case, all these beauty brands that understand that the skin being this organ that we have to nurture and protect us, right? And using things like seaweed and putting, you know, building our gut and our ecosystem. I mean, we are a living, breathing ecosystem ourselves, right? It's not just about our relationship with nature. We're a part of nature. We're not outside of it. And so when you look at your beauty products, you know, I would just say, and you can take a screenshot, I'm not gonna go through all these, I'm just gonna say, these are chemicals in the products we're putting on our skin. So if you can't pronounce it, don't use it. And if you're using it, be aware of, you know, and minimize your use. It's not about perfection, right? This is about trying to make the best choices we can every day and being on the journey where you're at least awake and aware of everything that, you know, every choice that you're making. You know, I mean, a parabens, they, you know, affect our, our hormonal balance, right? So there is a relationship between, you know, how they bind to, you know, in the body that, you know, is competing with estrogen. And so there are all these, you know, manifestations of beauty products and thousands of chemicals that don't serve us. If you knew what they are, and I said, would you just rub these on your skin? You'd probably say no, but they're in the products that we're using. So now I'm gonna really introduce you to fashion, which is really kind of where I am today. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of a company called Eco Fashion Corp. And we're meeting a lot of brands and retailers where they are to help them build these models of agriculture to popular culture, or I say source to story, because as I said with the farm to table movement, we started by going back to the source to understand where our food is coming from, because we, we're starting to rebuild that relationship with our food. But now it's about going back to the source and understanding where our fashion comes from, right? Because cotton is one of the most heavily sprayed industries in agriculture with the worst carcinogenic chemicals and people you know it, farmers have been lured in by these chemical companies that are told they're gonna get better yields and that doesn't matter how much they spray because we're not eating cotton well we actually are 60% of the cotton plant goes back into the food stream as cottonseed oil right so when you you know, gin out the seeds when you harvest cotton, which cotton doesn't grow in our department store, right? People like forget that it's actually part of nature, no different than the food you're eating. And so when you look at the, the magnitude and multitude of chemicals in cotton, and then you pull the curtain back, and you look at the finishes and the dyes that go into the textiles we're wearing every day, you know, from thousands of 
toxic dyes and finishes that are not regulated, right? And again, this skin, we're putting them on our bodies, we're wearing them all day long. And soil being that sort of immune system for the plants, if we can build healthy soil and we can build regenerative, organic, and even biodynamic farming methods, then we can not only build soil that's gonna build healthy plants, be more resistant to bugs, and be purer on our skin, the way that cotton is actually marketed, but we're also finding a solution to climate change, because a lot of people don't know that regenerative agriculture is actually one of our number one solutions to climate change. Because when you have healthy soil, you have an ecosystem, a living ecosystem, that will sequester carbon out of the atmosphere. But when we turn soil into dirt, whether it's the food system or it's the fiber system, you basically have chemical runoff going into the waterways that we're depending on to you know, drink, to breathe the air, right? But you also have you know, systems that are broken and no longer can sequester carbon. And you know, here a couple of stats that people don't know. I mean, the fashion industry is one of the leading causes of air and water pollution. It's actually second to coal. 20% of the world's freshwater pollution is coming from textile treatment and dyeing. 10% of the world's carbon footprint is coming from the fashion industry, right? So agriculture, transportation, um, and so the impacts, you know, socially, the waste in the landfills, so over 5% of landfills are filled with textiles. And here's something most people don't realize. Every single synthetic garment ever produced in the history of mankind does not biodegrade, which means all those synthetics, polyester, acrylic, nylon, um, all those fibers that are basically plastic, when you wash them, they're going into your washing machines, they're going into the rivers, they're going into the oceans. So we're not even talking about our land ecosystems anymore, we're talking about our ocean ecosystems are getting destroyed. 35% of the plastic in the oceans is textile waste. And I'll just quickly you know, go through it. I have a, an article, an interview I did on Goop that will break down, if just Google, if you wanna really understand all the chemicals that are going into the fashion system and understand the impacts of these dyes and finishes and flame retardants and you know, brighteners and whiteners and, and you know, things that make you water resistant and stain resistant. I mean, these are all formaldehyde, heavy metals, lead, acetones, you know, chlorine bleach, as I said. I mean, there's, you know, an insane amount of chemicals that go into our uh, fashion system that can compromise our health and lead to things like cancer and other degenerative illnesses and endocrine dis disruptors. And that's why American Airlines stewardesses actually filed a lawsuit against American several years ago because so many of the, the stewardesses were reacting to the clothing that they were being given and, and asked to wear. And so, you know, a third of the population today is walking around with chemical sensitivities and 70 million people with asthma and allergies. And it's not just what we put in our bodies. You have to think about every choice you're making. And I'll just end real quickly by showing you a few more um, points. One is Farm to Home, which is a brand I started um, a few years ago on QVC, and i was been going on QVC the last few years to really teach people about, you know, you spend a third of your life in bed. You're supposed to, right? I don't always, but... Um, and, you know, there's over two pounds of pesticides in a single bed sheet to make that single bed sheet. And you're, you know, sleeping on that, and it's against your skin, and you're breathing it in through your pillowcases. So, you know, farm to home is an extension of the farm to table movement, that your sheets, your towels, your robes, you could find this brand on, you know, Kohl's.com, and jcpenny.com, it's mass market. So take away that it's too expensive. It's launching next week in Costco nationwide, um, our farm to home comforters. So, you know, it's about having those choices but being aware that they exist out there today because we don't inherit this land from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. That was a Native American quote that I love. And um, just end with, this is a, my mantra is yes and. This is also a brand I started, an apparel brand at yesand.style. And you know, yes, you can have style, quality, fit, color, comfort, hand, price, everything you want, and have a way to make a difference to human and environmental wellness, farmer and worker welfare, and future generations. You know, organic is not about sacrifice. It's good for people, it's good for planet, it's good for business. And so, you know, as an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, you know, it's about the five Ps. People, planet, profit, passion, and purpose. It's no compromise. I always say I'm like a little kid in a candy store. As an entrepreneur, I get to do what I love, make a living, 
and change the world and be a part of helping people understand, you know, by teaching by example and inspiring and educating and activating because we all are in this together and we have to vote with our dollars and recognize, you know, B Corps, it's a giant community today of over 4,000 B Corps in over 77 countries and I think 100 and 53 different industries around the world. This is a community of people looking at, you know, not doing less bad, but doing more good so that we can have, you know, more accessibility and affordability in the choices that we're making. So think about the brands, the companies, the products you're supporting, not just for yourself, but for all of us. And these are uh, what I call my Illumin artists in my book. These are uh, 40 people who are also leveraging their platforms to transform the world. They're my modern day Michelangelos of this movement. And they're all part of the you know, spokes in the wheel of change, food, fiber, and beauty, you know, and fashion, and business, and art, and wellness. It's all connected. And remember, the journey of a 1,000 miles begins with one step. If you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. This is another, um, just some tips if you want to take a, a slide. Um, but it's all hands on deck, personally, professionally. And I'll just say, you know, thank you to Shimide for having me and Sam and, and South by Southwest. And you can follow me at Marcy Zaroff at Yes And. Um, and remember, vision is the art of seeing things invisible, which is a Jonathan Swift quote that I love. Because we have to envision and visualize the future a new reality that is there to serve, that we can all be a part of, where we can be, live, eat, and wear the change that we wish to see. So thank you so much.